Hello and welcome. Before you continue, do be aware that I sometimes discuss sensitive or uncomfortable topics in my videos as they relate to the books I am reading or writing. Please take a moment to view any content warnings in the description. Thank you! Shelter is one of the basic requirements of life in Maslow's hierarchy of needs. All living things, from insects to human beings, require some place to live, to call home somewhere that they are safe from the dangers of the outside world. What happens when that place is more dangerous than what lies without? What happens when your house hates you? Welcome, my lovely Rose Garden, to The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Published in 1959, this work is considered one of the foremost entries into the specific genre of horror centered on haunted houses. It has inspired countless other works, including two movies and a Netflix miniseries that has led to a great resurgence in popularity for this work. That's actually how I came to read it. As such, allow me to clarify that the Mike Flanagan miniseries on Netflix is far removed from its source material, to the point that I would actually consider Flanagan's adaptation of The Turn of the Screw in The Haunting of Bly Manor to be more accurate to Hill House, as it lifts such lore from Hill House as the feuding sisters and not leaving after dark, and I find the characters of Danny and Viola to be more similar to the book versions of Eleanor and Theo. Setting that aside for now, the story of The Haunting of Hill House is as follows. Dr. Montague, an occult researcher, seeks to give his work legitimacy by recording paranormal phenomena at the famously unfriendly Hill House. To this end, he invites anyone with any kind of history of psychic experience to join him in staying at Hill House, as well as the future heir of the house under strict orders from the current owner that a member of the inheriting family must be present. Thus enters Theodora, Dr. Montague's assistant, Luke, the heir of Hill House, and Eleanor, a character described by various book blurbs as fragile and friendless. Though the mere sight of Hill House is unsettling and strikes an unknown yet disturbing chord in each character's heart, the four decide to stick it out, some to their apparent detriment. Now, given that this book was published in 1959, I am going to be discussing spoilers from this point onward. If you have never read The Haunting of Hill House and do not want to know anything beyond its concept, please stop the video now and come back after you've read it. One of the great things about it being a piece of classic literature is that it is widely available. Without a doubt, The Haunting of Hill House has entered my top 10 books, and this owes largely to Jackson's masterful writing. I do not think an author has ever scared me more with less. There is a trope referring to this as nothing is scarier, meaning that nothing can be more frightening to the audience than what they do not see, because our imaginations will supply more terror in trying to identify the unknown than any singular answer could provide. Jackson uses this to great effect to heighten the horror of Hill House. Two prominent examples come to mind. In the first, the visitors are all gathered in an uncomfortable sitting room, and Dr. Montague goes to fetch a game board from an adjacent room. He's only gone for a few minutes, and Eleanor, Theo, and Luke do not get any sense of anything being wrong, but when Dr. Montague returns, he insists that no one should go around the house alone after dark. He will not say what he heard or saw that makes him say this, only that it was probably his imagination, but nonetheless, no one should go alone. Everyone agrees, and then does their best to brush this off. We never find out what happened in those few minutes to cause such a strong reaction. Sometime later, Eleanor is laying in bed, frightened. Eleanor is introduced to the reader as a highly imaginative character, something which Hill House begins to prey on almost immediately. While Eleanor is assaulted with images and sounds that disturb her, she grabs onto Theo's hand for support only for Theo to rush in shortly after Eleanor cries out in fear. Whose hand was Eleanor holding? Neither the reader nor the characters ever find out. 
And this really is the nature of the titular haunting of Hill House. When the history of the property is described, it does not seem that any one event led to its haunting, rather that it was haunted from the outset, born bad in a sense. Every measurement in the house is ever so slightly off, making every single room uncomfortable in a way that the human brain recognizes but cannot rationalize. All the doors close on their own, not necessarily because there's a ghost wandering the halls closing them, but because the house wants them to be closed. The Haunting of Hill House is not a ghost story, not really. It is a haunted house story, and what I mean by that is, the house itself is, in no small way, the villain. Bad things happen to the characters because the house wants to hurt them. Like I mentioned before, Eleanor is particularly susceptible to the manipulation of the house due to her former isolation. Unlike Theo or Luke, Eleanor does not have family or friends to rely on when she leaves Hill House. There is really nothing to ground her to the outside, and her tendency toward daydreaming is quickly warped into paranoia. And the tragedy of this is that the early chapters establish that these characters do have excellent chemistry, and Eleanor thinks of Theo and Luke as friends. There are scenes of them exploring, playing games, talking, joking, building a legitimate rapport that makes the reader want to see more interactions between them, believe that they will all come through this experience on the other side together. And if this were a more hopeful book, with a more optimistic ending, Eleanor would find her true family and her companions here and gain grounding to the real world. She would go live with Theo or Luke and have a happy life. But that is not what happens, because this is the haunting of Hill House, and Hill House hates you and wants to hurt you, and it drives Eleanor into a paranoid frenzy where her friends expressing concern for her is twisted into contempt and derision, and she breaks the sacred rule of not leaving Hill House at night. She crashes her car and dies, the latest victim of the house, and the rest of the visitors leave quietly back to their lives to never speak of the incident again. And Hill House stands where it was, where it might stand for another 80 years, waiting for the next victim to come along. Again, like I said earlier, I think I would actually pair this with the Haunting of Bly Manor miniseries, which I think better matches the tone and character relationships of this book. Of course, the 1963 adaptation, The Haunting, is probably the best adaptation of the source material out there. If you want something to watch that isn't a direct adaptation, but evokes some similar-ish vibes, then I'd recommend The Awakening 2011. So, Rose Garden, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. While you're there, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more like it. If you would like to support my writing, I highly encourage you to sign up for my newsletter on the Roslyn Books website. You can also support me by making a donation on Patreon or Coffee. I use these funds to publish new books and am trying to get enough funding to create audiobook editions of my works. All links are in the description. Keep growing until next time, Rose Garden!